second time. And he specifies what he means by that is spiritually, not physically, but spiritually. Now, keeping that in mind, I want to show you some other passages where the same expression, exactly the same expression as he used. The next one is in the 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Now, that one I just read in John's Gospel is very familiar. This one in Peter is not as familiar, but it's, I want you to notice the same terminology or similar terminology. Verse 23. He's talking about us as Christians, and he says, being born again, uh, another way to say that having been born again, that's more accurately what he means, I think. Having been born again or being born again, you notice the same terminology. Now, he gives us a little more information, not of corruptible seed, that is to say physically, but of incorruptible. Now, that's basically, when he says not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, he's saying the same thing Jesus said, which is not of the flesh, but of the spirit. And then he's a little more specific. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. He says, being born again, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So, how is it that uh, God has offspring? How is it that we can be said to be born again? He says, by the word of God. Well, it's just this simple. The word of God means... Uh, words from God, if you want to say it that way, and specifically this terminology is used in the New Testament to talk about the gospel. The gospel is the message of Jesus. The gospel is the message about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. How he carried our sins in his own body on the tree. And uh, when we believe the gospel, when we hear those words, those words of God, when we believe that, you see, this is where Jesus and the Apostle Paul and others put all the emphasis on our believing that gospel, believing that message. You remember when they came to Jesus and they said, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? He said, here's the work of God for you, that you believe on the one that he has sent. We believe in him or put our faith in him. Or I like the way uh, uh, J.B. Phillips says it. When we transfer our faith from ourselves to him. You know, that, that's a good way to define what it means to believe when we transfer, see there comes a point in time when we hear the gospel and we transfer our faith and our confidence and our trust from ourselves to God. That's what it means to believe in Jesus. We're trusting Him as our Savior, as the one who makes us right with God. Now I like to say it that way because that makes it very specific. You know, I think it's easy to say, oh, I believe in Jesus. But what do you mean by that? I mean, it's, it's not, it doesn't mean just to believe that he existed and that he's a historical figure. I've talked to a lot of people who say, I believe in Jesus. I believe he's the Son of God. Well, that's good. It's good to believe he's the Son of God. But see, what you're supposed to do is transfer your confidence from yourself to him. Now, I've talked to a lot of people that are professing Christians, come to church all their whole life through, and they'll say things to me like, boy, I hope I've done enough good things to get into heaven. Now, look, if that's what you think, I'm not going to ask if you actually said that, but if that's the thought that's running through your mind, that means you're trusting in yourself. See, I'm not saying you, you, you're not a Christian, but you've got to get this straight in your mind. What it means to believe in Jesus is we're not trusting ourselves anymore. We trust Him instead. Because if it's about us doing enough good things, I'll save you the, uh, I'll save you some time. No, you haven't done enough good things. How many good things does it take? Well, here's what it takes. You have to do all good things and no bad things. Well, that's a pretty steep, steep uh, uh, requirement. Yeah, it's so steep nobody can meet it. That's why you have to have a Savior. What did I just read? Oh, yeah, I forgot where we were here. Uh, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, when you hear the word of God, the message of Jesus, and you believe that, and you transfer your faith from yourself to him, you are, you can be said to be born of him, born of God. Here's another way it's said. Uh, that's First Peter. Um, let's see, go back to uh, James. No, is James later? He's earlier, yeah. Go back to James. He says the same, same old thing here. It's very interesting uh, that this keeps cropping up. Um, look at verse uh, 18 for chapter 1 verse 18 James 1 18 he says of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures he says now James tells us even more he says, of his own will begat now, you know in our everyday life we don't say begat I don't ever say that I don't know say, well, I'm going to go visit someone in the hospital. They begat someone. No, you know, that's like words that you use in the Old Testament where it says so-and-so begat so-and-so. It means to give birth to. It means birth. It means having uh, given birth to. That's what begat means. Of his own will, he gave birth to us. 
by the word of truth. Now, that's why, in that sense, that's why Jesus said, I've come to reveal the Father. And that's why we can pray. You know, when the disciples said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. He said, okay, here's what you say. And he gave them a model prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer. When you pray, say, our Father. First words in the prayer, our Father. Right? Jesus told his disciples, those who believe in him. By virtue, listen, Jesus said, nobody knows the Father except me. I'm the Son. Now, Jesus is the Son of God. But by virtue of our faith in Him, we become, through Him, children of God. If I could say sons of God, that there's no you know, male or female. But we are the offspring of God by virtue of our faith in Him, the Son of God. So we get the same relationship with God that He gets. And now He says, when you pray, say, our Father. Okay, the first attribute of a father is having given birth. To give birth to. You know what the second thing that, that occurs to me about a father is... Uh, the father uh, exerts, or not some by word, uh, the father uh, has care for his children. Right? I think that's a natural instinct of, of fathers. Now, when Jesus calls God by that name, Father, and he says, I come to reveal the Father to you, Jesus just about doesn't use any other word for God except Father. That's just about the, I mean, that is like 99% of the time when he talks about God or to God, he uses the word Father. He wants to get that in our minds. And the reason is, we know, when he used the word father, we know what it means, in, in some sense at least, what it means to be a father. Uh, here's one thing. We're right here in James. Back up a, a, a verse or two. Back up to verse 16. Look at what he says. James 1, 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. That means don't make an error. Don't make a mistake. In other words, I'm getting ready to tell you something, and I want you to get it straight, and don't be mistaken about this. Do not err. Listen. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father, notice he calls him Father, of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Why does he tell us this? That do not make a mistake. Good and perfect gifts come from God, from the Father, and they come from above. Notice he doesn't say, you know, some days he'll give you good gifts, some days he'll give you bad gifts. He says, good and perfect gifts come from above, from the Father of lights. You know, there's many unfortunate things that happen in life. But I don't think it's right, I don't think it's correct to blame God for those things. Now, many times, Christians will, in an attempt to comfort people when they've had some tragedy or bad things, say, well, God had some purpose in this. You know, that's not the right thing to say after a tragedy. First of all, I don't think it's true. And here's why I don't think it's true. Because James said, don't err. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. So I would say, if a thing is not good or perfect, then uh, there's a distinct possibility that God didn't send it. You give me things can happen in life that are not God's will? Oh yeah, absolutely they can. And, I, and, and the way you know that for sure is, uh, you have done things in your life that were not God's will. I'm just waiting for the dust to settle after that statement. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. You've heard me say this before, I know. Have you? And, and I, don't, I don't even want to point fingers at you. I'll just talk about me. But let's use you two. Have we ever, that's all, all of us, have we ever, have, can you think of a time in your life when you ever did something that was wrong? Or said something that was wrong? And I think if we're honest, we can all say yes. Next question is, when you did or said that thing that you know was wrong, did, you, did God make you do it, or did you do it all on your own? <laughs> well, I think the answer is obvious. We did it all on our own. God didn't pull the strings and make us do something wrong. That means we have the moral capacity to do either good or bad. That means things, at least in the human scope of things, there could be things happening, good and bad, and God might not be the agent or the author of it. So James here says, do not err. See why he's, he's saying this is, I want you to know what he's like. Good and perfect things come down from the Father. Now, you know what? When bad things happen, he's there to comfort us and to help us. Just like a good father would be. Now, I know uh, in, in the church world, uh, sometimes Christians, especially if they've been in church a long time, they like those traditional ways of saying things, and it makes them unhappy when you come along and say something that's contradictory to that. I think uh, some people are more attached to just the things we say, our traditional way of looking at things. And so I've had this conversation. I, uh, this is not a, a hypothetical. Uh, I've really had this conversation. Uh, I, I've said that very thing I just said to you. Good and perfect things come from God. Other than that, 
uh, it might just be natural.